Okay, so now we're going to go to Mr. Adrian Common, who, is, uh, who has worked for over 20 years in human rights, advocacy, philanthropy, education, and politics. Since 2013, he coordinates the International Human Rights Program at the ACRUS Foundation in New York. Adrian was a litigant in case Common, Hamilton, and Accept versus Romania, in which the Court of Justice of the European Union decided that the term spouse in the Un European Union free movement law includes same-sex spouses. The Constitutional Court of Romania subsequently recognized the right to private and family life of same-sex couples. Adrian is going to speak, uh, going to deliver a presentation, a plaintiff's perspective European Court of Justice recognition of same-sex spouses. Okay, Adrian, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello to you all and uh, good morning from New York City, where it is 6.30 in the morning, but I am very ready to be good with morning, you. Good morning, good morning. And I'm sorry I cannot be there because I have been several times to Vilnius and I have great uh, memories from, uh, from your country. So um, I want to thank you for this opportunity to share with you um, our litigation story and what it means to my husband Clay and I as uh, plaintiffs. And I am aware that Lithuania is one of the six uh, EU countries where the judgment of the Court of Justice of the EU in our case uh, really, uh, really mattered. So I want to start uh, by first showing you a few photos of my family. And I think my, my new friend, Audrius, arranged so that I can do some clicking through these um, slides. So um, first of all, you see uh, my husband Clay and I in uh, New York in uh, those photos. Um, we met in 2002. He is from Texas and he is sleeping now, so he cannot be on. He has a hard day. Um, the first photo is uh, the two of us protesting at the uh, Republican convention that took place in New York in 2004. The second one is the two of us in uh, uh, Brooklyn. Look how young and beautiful we were. And uh, now I realize, Audrius, that I don't see an arrow anymore to be doing the clicking. So I don't know what, okay, he's done it for me. Um, you can see in the next photo, Clay and I with my father in Transylvania in 2007 in one of the various trips we took to um, Romania where we never lived together. And the second one is in Brussels a few uh, years later um, in 2010, which is the year we got married. Can you please go to the next? And there you have us on the left side at our marriage ceremony together with my mother. Um, the photo is taken at the city hall in Skarbek, one of the neighborhoods in Brussels. And to the right, you see the photo that uh, we used on our marriage invitation. Can you go to the next, please? And then we're already getting into the litigation. You see in both photos, we are at the Romanian Constitutional Court in 2016. There was so much media um, interest uh, at the time. It was unbelievable. So I chose that photo to the left. And to the right, you see us together with uh, uh, NGO Accept, which is an LGBT group there and a party to, uh, to this case um, that is right on the stairs of the Constitutional Court. And can you go to the next and last slide? 
There, we are at the other court, the Court of Justice of the European Union, um, one year later. Um, and to the left, you can see um, Clay and I with uh, Justina Ionescu, our main lawyer, uh, right next to me, and then my parents. And to the right, we are inside the uh, court, and you see the legal team that was assembled there together with us and our um, parents. There were many, many lawyers and many others who worked uh, to support uh, our case, and they did it uh, pro bono. And I am done with the photos. So um, Clay and I have been together for 19 years. Um, we met and lived in New York, where I immigrated through the U.S. visa lottery. We then got married in Brussels in 2010. And two years later, I was unemployed in Brussels when my contract ended with the European Parliament. And we were trying to find a way to be back together, as Clay continued to be, uh, to be here in New York. And one option was Romania, but Clay needed a legal residence there. The Romanian consulate in Brussels refused to transcribe our Belgian marriage certificate. That transcription was one document needed to apply for the residence. So I wrote to the Romanian immigration authority asking how Clay can get the residence. And the answer was that he cannot because the civil code explicitly prohibits the recognition of same-sex marriages realized abroad. I cannot describe to you the disappointment of holding these denial letters from Romanian government authorities. It did not matter to them that I, their citizen, formed a family through marriage, marriage which is the highest form of legal commitment that society created to protect two people who share their love and an emotional, financial, and social life. What did matter to the Romanian government was that we had the same sex. That made us not belong together anymore as a family in the Romanian law and those who apply it. I returned to New York in 2013 and we went to court in the same year together with the Romanian NGO, um, Accept, which has supported us all, our, all through these nine um, years. The EU court said that we are spouses for the purpose of free movement in the European Union. Then the Romanian Constitutional Court, which had submitted the questions to the EU court. So the Romanian Constitutional Court confirmed that decision and for the first time said that we do have the right to a private and family life, just like heterosexual couples. However, the first instance court that we went to afterwards closed the case on procedural grounds. That decision was maintained on appeal. Therefore, these courts never addressed the substantive claim of discrimination in our case. So we filed a complaint with the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, which is the court of last resort. And that's where we are at the moment in our litigation. It has been about nine years through the courts and it is not over yet. It is a very long time. We won't give up though, no matter what it takes, but we are disappointed that governments come and go and there have been nine governments of Romania during this time, by the way, and none of these governments has changed the situation. We and many other couples bear the consequences meanwhile, and there are more consequences other than the lack of a legal residence for Clay in Romania. For instance, the Consulate of Romania in New York refused to take my passport application in 2019 because I declared myself married on the application form. A police authority told me in this context point blank, I quote, while your marriage is not recognized in Romania, your civil status is unmarried. So, dear colleagues and friends, I am single in Romania, and I could probably marry a woman, and that would not be polygamy. How can I be single for Romania, but married for Belgium and many other EU countries, including 
uh, and the United States. And I wonder, how about Lithuania? Am I single or married in your country? I did get a passport eventually, but I had to go to the media and to court again in a second litigation on the same issue essentially. And I am lucky to have an American passport, but others do not have a second passport to travel, nor can they go to court or the media. What can they do? How do they access their rights? How do they live their life with dignity and the protection of the law? I'm going to stop here, not before thanking you all and LGL, whom I know from our work jointly in the 90s in the context of ILGA Europe, a wonderful organization. Um, it is a bigger, long fight for all of us, but history and opinion polls, as we've seen uh, earlier, show that we are winning the hearts and minds of people. And eventually, we will get to our judges and politicians as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Adrian, if you can stay for a little bit longer, and I will ask uh, if anyone has questions. And I see Monica is ready to ask. Well, I do not have a question, but I have an answer to Adrian's <laughs> question. <laughs> well, when it comes to Lithuania, it is my uh, obligation as a citizen of Lithuania to register marriage uh, at the civil metrication here in Lithuania. It's my obligation. It's no, not a matter of my wants, what I want, or I do not want. It's a matter of my uh, cit citizen obligation. But if I conclude that a same-sex marriage or partnership for that matter, I do not have any legal tool to register my uh, marriages, marriage concluded abroad here in Lithuania. So yes, that, that raises another question about the polygamy and whatnot. Thank you for, so Adrian, are you clear now? Um, well, I think I have to take a trip there, and okay. I'll try it out. <laughs> Super. On the 4th of June, I think you should be coming here. It's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of good discussions. So, any more questions? No more questions. So, thank you once again, Adrian, and uh, you are creating history, and uh, just round of applause once again. Thank you. Thank you.